Thanks for joining, Susie. Of course. So here we are, you, me, and the machine. Yes. So I wanted to start by um, talking about something a little more human. Okay. So tell me a little bit about um, some of the, the, the trips that you like to take with your family. Uh, yes. Well, with my family, it is a toss-up between sun and snow. Uh, we are big skiers, and, uh, but have uh, vacationed here in beautiful Hollywood, Florida, uh, as recently as last year. My daughters were right out in the, the bay, jumping in the ocean out there. So we love to travel, but it's a toss-up, sun and snow. So I'm a big snow fan, okay. uh, living in Colorado. Do you think a machine could replicate some of those experiences that you have in ski country? <laughs> Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I treasure every moment with uh, these five, four people and, and me. Um, no, I don't think a machine can replicate the experience of travel. Yeah, it, and being in ski country, it is amazing getting out in the snow, away from devices, with the family, having conversations on chairlifts. It's really hard to replicate that with machines. It is. It is. Um, but maybe a machine could help in the process of you know, searching for and shopping and booking. And we're gonna get, that, get to that in a little bit. Okay. Um, but I wanted to, uh, you know, I wanted to shift to um, this topic that we've talked a lot about today called AI. Heard uh, of it. Google, uh, you know, announced that, uh, that back in 2016, um, really established as we're an AI first company. So I think it would be great to, um, maybe share a few words with, with the audience on what you've learned over the last, you know, five, six, seven years and how you can kind of apply that to what we're seeing today. Yeah. Um, well, absolutely right. We are an AI first company and we believe that AI is one of the most profound technologies that humans are working on today. But the reality is we've actually been using AI and machine learning across our platforms for over 20 years. And you see that play out in many ways. So um, while we're really excited about the things to come, you know, we're not losing the foundation of, of what we've been doing for some time now. Um, you know, I think that uh, there's a couple different ways we're thinking about how AI is gonna integrate. Um, you know, one, how are we using it for our products? And then, um, and that includes travelers, and then how are we um, integrating it into our products for marketers? So uh, a lot of different use cases, but again, you know, we've been using it in things like Smart Compose maps, um, you know, things uh, including helping doctors and uh, sustainability efforts. So we're really thinking about it pretty broad, but we have the core uh, concept of being responsible about how we're thinking about AI for the long term. So as marketers are, are, you know, trying to figure out in the current time how they can optimize their content, should they just think about credible content as they've always thought about it um, in order to optimize, you know, where they end up in the, in, the, in the search results? So I think this is a great opportunity to think about how, where the machine can play a role. It cannot on the C slope, but the machine can play a role in helping you optimize your content. So as we think about that, you know, across our products, it's how do we make it the most relevant and useful for travelers? And then from a marketing perspective, how do we help marketers not have to, you know, decide which creative to use or who are they trying to target, but to actually enter those goals? So this is where the inputs become a really important factor of AI. You know, what are, what are you trying to achieve? What visual assets do you have? and let us try to start to automate and find that and deliver returns that you're seeking out. So as you're, as you're injecting um, BARD into, into search results, are there occasions when, you know, a consumer is, is kind of using search as they traditionally have and they're looking for just standard search results versus somebody that's looking for a little bit more context? Um, maybe it's a longer search phrase. Are you kind of, you know, kind of balancing those things? Yeah, so, you know, BARD is our Gen AI experience, and one of the things that is really exciting about BARD is, um, is the extensions that we've recently launched, and that speaks to your point of how do you get more content out of BARD. 
Uh, I'll give you an example, and it's related to the picture you saw. So my family is trying to plan a ski trip for December, and my husband wants to drive, I want to fly, we don't have a place to stay yet, we're trying to figure out dates. Um, I entered all of this information into BARD, and BARD has extensions, then what that means is it goes across Google platforms. So things Gmail, YouTube, flights, um, hotel search, all of those different things are incorporated in these extensions and are accessible by BARD as it's creating um, that response for you. So once I entered in the things I was looking to do and all the inputs, again, focusing on how important the quality of your inputs is, you know, BARD came back to me and said, well, it'll take you know, 10 hours to drive, one hour and 50 minutes to fly, here's the places you can stay, um, you know, here's your availability. And in addition to just having that information, I was able to quickly export that to a sheet. So I had it all to share with other members of my family um, that are part of this decision. So I think extensions are a way that we're thinking about how BARD's going to start integrating um, into search and, and provide uh, more of that travel planning experience. And if I can add one more pro tip while we're on the topic of extensions. Yes, please do. So for any of you that are parents, and I know you are, go into BARD, tell it to please search the emails from your school and give you a brief summary, because usually they're four pages long, and it will give you a succinct summary of the things you need to know that week from your school, which has uh, really changed my life. <laughs> That's a great suggestion, because I find myself just swiping and deleting all of those emails from school, and I'm sure there's important stuff in there that I'm missing. <laughs> I think the last thing I'll say is, you know, there's a big fear of Gen AI and, well, you know, do I, am I integrated with ChatGPT or BARD, and do I have this integrated into my site, and do I have bots and agents? The most important thing from my perspective is to start utilizing these tools to see how they respond. So go try to plan a vacation in BARD. Go try to um, use these extensions in different ways, and you will, that fear will be reduced because you'll be a lot more comfortable with what it actually can provide, and you'll see there's still some deficiencies, right? Like, it's not um, going to change overnight. It's going to take time. So as you think about BARD and Gen AI, um, you know, we've seen a lot of trip planning sites uh, over the last decade plus, and some of the early implementations of Gen AI have been, you know, trip planning applications. Um, do you think we'll get to a point where there's, you know, an interface that will, will be the, you know, one size fits all trip planner because there's a lot more context being entered into a, you know, Gen AI interface? Or, you know, do you think that, um, you know, trip planning is, is still going to, you know, require that a traveler go to different sites until they feel comfortable that they've made the right decision. Yeah. So there's a lot of talk about the future and, you know, agents and bots completely tra planning the trip for you. And maybe that will be true down the road. But I think we have to be, you know, grounded in the realities of today. And what we are seeing is that people are actually researching more before they take the trip. So they're actually, you know, entering in more searches and trying to understand more about where they can go and their options before they book that trip. And then, once they've booked, they're still going and researching after that. So we want to think about kind of um, the motivators as well, right? Like a lot of people are planning their trips to reduce stress. So we want to make that process as frictionless as possible and connect travelers to partners um, you know, in the most seamless way possible so that they can you know, enjoy that trip. And uh, again, I still think there is uh, a lot of research going on and we have evidence of that today. So as far as your, your, your marketing partners, what, what sort of success are, are they finding integrating AI into their, um, into their marketing campaigns? Yeah. So we've just recently started calling it AI in the last year, but really machine learning and AI have been integrated into um, you know, a lot of our marketing products for quite some time. And the one that I'll highlight here, because it's probably most relevant and, and um, the best use case is a product that we have called Performance Max. Now what this does is it takes the guesswork out of building your campaigns, trying to figure out who you're trying to reach, where should you run to reach those travelers. And what it does is it automates that for you and it brings in the visual assets and, and builds those creatives so that you can um, get the optimal return. So I'll give you an example of where Performance Max is being used. We're starting to see advertisers adopt this across the board. Um, we have an example where Lufthansa ran a campaign and 
you know, even in hard economic times, strong growth ambitions that they have. And, you know, by employing Performance Max, they were able to increase their customer acquisition by 45%, and their bookings increased by 59%. And that was all at a lower cost per auction. So these are the kinds of results we can see by, not, by taking the guesswork out of that. And I think the other thing that is really valuable here in both Performance Max and some of our video products as well is the ability to get better at creative. So you don't have to come up with the entire concept. And a lot of you are sitting on a lot of great visual assets. You know a lot about your travelers. Combining those two things together and utilizing them in an automated way is going to take your marketing to the next level. Um, I want to get into, into some shifts you're seeing on the spend, you know, the spend marketing side. So are you seeing shifts from some of your traditional paid channels over to, uh, over to video channels, for example? You know, we see, uh, you know, I heard someone this morning talk about having um, a balance of brand marketing goals and performance marketing goals and that they're both going to ex exist. So we're really working with marketers to try and find that balance. But the example I just gave you of Performance Max, you actually, you know, you can enter performance goals, but with Performance Max and other products like um, some of our YouTube video reach campaigns, it takes a little bit of the guesswork of making that hard decision. Like, I want to run in video, or I want to run in search advertising. Um, it actually looks across platforms and can help you optimize for what your business goals are, right? So you don't have to say, you know, I'm going to invest X in video marketing, I'm going to invest X in performance marketing. You can actually let the machine make that decision for you. It's great. So that's a, another great example of where a machine can really help Yes. a marketer understand where they need to put their, their dollars in what channels. Yes. Um, so I want to get into the, the topic of trust because, um, you know, it's come up a few times today. I think it'll come up probably a lot more tomorrow as we dig into some of these really specific AI sessions. But trust is one thing that, you know, your company has, has spent decades building trust with users that they're getting the best results when they type something into a search bar. Um, as they're testing out Bard, they're getting a, a, a message that says, Bard may display inaccurate and, or offensive information that doesn't represent Google's views. So how do you kind of balance those things? Um, you know, you need to think about the trust that you've built up, but you also need to experiment with, you know, with new emerging technologies. Yeah, luckily I didn't get any of those when I did my trip planning experiment. Um, you know, this is hugely important to Google, and it is going to be at the core of how we continue to innovate. Um, everything that we do as an AI-first company is built around the foundation of our AI principles. And that is something that we are sharing with others, and it's something that we've actually collaborated with universities and organizations to say, how do we all do this responsibly together? You know, Google doesn't want to be doing it one way and have the rest of the community um, doing it another way. So we are going to continue to be bold. We are going to continue to, you know, act quick as an AI first company, but we're not going to do it at the expense of um, doing it responsibly and, and having a good understanding of what that means. There's a lot of things that we're um, putting in place, like being very diligent about the data and, um, you know, privacy constraints and testing. Testing is really critical here, to be able to test and understand instead of just moving forward um, in an unsafe way. Um, I want to shift to some topics um, so we can kind of dig into some of the bigger topics that we're seeing out there today. So sustainability is one. We had a, a startup pitch, um, Weva, who's, who's building a sustainability dashboard for hotels. Okay. So I'm wondering, you know, Google does a number of things around sustainability. Google Flights has, you know, carbon, carbon emissions. Google, uh, on the hotel side, it's the eco-certified badges. So what are some of the things that you're seeing as being successful? Um, you know, are you able to impact consumer behavior through some of the initiatives that, that you have integrated into your products? Yeah, so on the, on the topic of sustainability, I mean, this is it's hugely important. We know that, you know, just under 80% of people expect, you know, big companies to be taking action and be a part of, you know, protecting the climate. Um, so I want to I want to talk about it in three ways. So one, what are we doing as Google? Two, how is it, um, you know, integrating into our products? And then three, you know, what does this mean for for other companies out there and that are partnering with us? 
uh, you know, it, it's no secret, it is a big priority for Google, both in the way we operate. So you think about things like our data centers, our everyday operations, we were making sustainable choices there. Um, you know, we, we think about how it integrates into our products as well. So you mentioned that we are giving carbon emission information in flights, um, hotels, we have information there. So we want people to be make informed choices. Right? So we want to just give all the information that is available for them to make informed choices based on their sustainable preferences. The last one is, how are we thinking about the opportunity for our partners um, when it comes to sustainability? And one thing that I think is very interesting is we're starting to see creative messaging come, um, come in around sustainability for some of our, our partners that have worked with us. We recently worked with you know, four big partners in our Creative Works organization, and all of them were focused on sustainability, and they were actually using some of our AI technology to deliver that message. Um, there was an Uber campaign that ran that we, not only did they build the, under, the entire campaign um, in a sustainable way, so they, you know, they had no craft services, they had, you know, they just filmed it, uh, you know, off-site, they didn't have big production budgets. Um, but then the message was around the, am the amount of electric vehicles. They used all electric vehicles in the campaign. So they created these digital assets, and then they actually utilized AI technology to run that video in the right moment at the right time, and to people that were seeking out that information. So, you know, a big win for them to be able to use AI technology to build their brand around a positive sustainability message. So on that note, um, the topic of over-tourism has obviously been in the news Pre-pandemic, pandemic obviously helped some of those destinations that were really inundated with over-tourism. Is there a role for Google to play in helping maybe to showcase uh, destinations that can, you know, can help with, with that particular problem? Um, you know, we will continue to show all the information available, so I don't know that we would be changing the way we show destinations based on sustainability, but we will provide that information in addition to, you know, where those destinations or providers may show up um, in search so that they can give as much information about what they're doing as possible. Okay. Um, I want to shift gears to travel discovery. So uh, we talked a little bit about this uh, earlier. Um, in particular, you know, some of the different products that you offer, things to do um, is something that you integrated into the, the Google Travel page. You're pulling it away from there and, and adding it to your Maps experience. So can you touch on what you're doing with things to do and kind of the thought process around maybe pulling more of that visual into the Maps environment? Yeah. So, um, you know, things to do, very important. Once you get somewhere, you want to have, uh, you know, ideas and be able to book things to do as well. So, um, as you mentioned, right now it exists within a tab of things to do. And what we're doing is really just making it part of the overall um, search experience in Maps and in Core Search. Now, people will be able to, um, you know, sell tickets and, and purchase ads to be able to sell uh, attractions or things to do uh, via um, travel campaigns within search. So there is still that opportunity, but we're just bringing it more into the environment of our, of our core travel mission of em empowering um, travelers to make decisions and then connecting them to partners in the best way possible. Okay, great. So I know we've got a couple minutes left. I wanna, I wanna hear um, just some thoughts that you have on the future of, of Google Travel. Um, Matt Goldberg mentioned this morning that you know, he's interested in some more collaboration, which I think is, is, a, is a good story. But I just want to hear how you're thinking about collaborating with brands um, as you're kind of looking at maybe more of a, you know, future roadmap. Yeah. So, you know, and I thought Matt had a great perspective on it. I mean, we are, they are a great marketing partner of ours, as are, um, you know, so many of our partners. But that's, it doesn't stop there. There's so many ways that we are, um, and I mentioned this earlier, like building together, right? So we are talking about some of the Gen AI solutions that we bring to our own products and platforms and bringing those to our partners and having those conversations as well. So saying, you know, hey, as you're building for the future of Gen AI, here's how we're thinking about it. Here's how we want to make our consumer experience that much better. You know, how could we bring this to a partner, you know, like TripAdvisor or someone else out there? And, and we are having quite a few of those conversations today. Great, so we've got about a minute left. I wanna do a, a quick speed round with you. Okay. So we're gonna play this or that. So okay. you need to choose one or the other word. Got it. Um, let's start with snow or beach. 
Uh, I'm gonna pick snow because it's pouring rain out there. <laughs> Pizza or pasta? Pizza. Family or friends? Mm. <laughs> uh, family. And friends. And friends <laughs> that are family. <laughs> Expedia or booking? Ooh. You know, I live in Seattle. I'm gonna go with the home team. <laughs> Bard or chat GPT? Bard. <laughs> Humans or machines? Humans. Thank you very much, Susie. <laughs> Thank you, Pete.